Proud our Father, as we gather with the sounds and sights of Christmas surrounding us, we just pray that you put Christmas truly into our hearts, that our God who came so that we might be truly close to him to teach us about patience and caring, that we may be mindful of others, that we may truly look at the individuals that we serve, at their will, and their needs and their um, care and comfort may truly be uppermost in our mind, and that as we make decisions that we look for the good of all rather than our own personal interest, be with us through this night, be with us through this season, give us the blessing and graces that each of us needs. To this prayer and to every prayer, we say, Amen. 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 Are there any additions to the agenda? Yes, I'd like to request a five minute executive session. <coughs> uh, no, I'd like a personal one. Do we need a time to talk about this? Or? Uh, yes, yeah, I can. Well, just put it in here somewhere. Yeah, put it in our mail. That's the letter on the property at Fourth and West. Yes. Yeah. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for it. Consent agenda. Approve the minutes for the regular meeting of 12-3-2013. Approve minutes for the financial planning workshop. Approve appropriation ordinance 12-17-2013 in the amount of 14361.36. Are there any corrections, additions to the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for all. Mr. Meyer? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've come before the council to ask permission to put a uh, pole and cable fence around our parking lot at Sixth and Row. Um, we have an issue of and the parking lot's not set up well, and uh, the parking barriers really don't keep people from driving over that across the curb out into the street. Uh, and we're going to put, you know, just steel poles along the perimeter and cable between them. And I visited with Mel about that, and uh, I guess I'll kind of defer to you on this. So why the permission is needed here. Uh, one thing that they're wanting to do, you can correct me if I'm wrong, you're wanting to put the, the cable and poles out on the right of way mm -hmm. so as to not lose parking. If they put it back as a normal fence or anything like that, it would be out of the right of way. And uh, Monroe is a 96 foot wide right of way and uh, 6th Street is 75. So that would set them quite a ways back you know, work with the uh, uh, cable and poles. So it really isn't a uh, zoning issue once we get out of the regular guidelines. In other words, I talked to our uh, uh, consultant on this and he said, you know, you can either make them have a regular fence permit and that's where it would be, or the council, if, if they wanted to, and since it's a parking lot area, could, could choose to uh, basically forego that and let them put it out there. Uh, the only thing he did mention was that uh, allowing them to do this not according to zoning regulations, anything that's put out there could become somewhat of a liability because the city is allowing it to be there. And I don't. How tall of a were you looking at? Uh, less than three feet. Okay. on the poles, and we're looking at six foot back from the curb. Right. Uh, okay. The only thing I mentioned to him, you know, and 
could happen anywhere on anything and you know get a big snow pile or hang up and so let me decide I bet you I can drive my truck over the top of it and end up knocking her you know hole in her oil pan or something like that you know is the city liable I mean we allowed it to put them there but they're, they're the ones that, that did the act so I did talk to uh, Rod Lyons and uh, about that and he suggested we kind of talk about it and I mentioned about insurance and I talked to our insurance uh, representative about that and he wasn't super concerned I mean we have liability insurance but it, it is to the fact that we are allowing something not normally done so he wasn't super concerned but you know there is an exposure there so it's strictly up to the city but Rod Rod recommended discussing it tonight and then maybe meet with him or get kind of a, make sure we had all the facts as far as what was going on and go from there but I mean, I understand their position. I mean, you lose quite a few parking spots by doing that. Place, so. Yeah, yeah. If we had to go back to the regular setbacks, I, we wouldn't be able to put it there. We'd lose too much parking to justify that. Well, I don't have a problem with it. As many other parks, and the amount of footage we've had with that cable and pipe system, I don't have a problem. Is it uh, behind the, the side of the sidewalk? Yeah, there's really there's one little section of sidewalk that's right at the curb, uh, along Sixth Street there. And this will be a block that's east right. of this street right here, over by the Junior yes. High, crossroad yeah. north of Junior High. Mm -hmm. Yes, on the right. curve. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's you know eventually, <coughs> you know, we could be a little more aggressive about making sure people don't pull across there. You know, ball games it's a little tougher, but. You know, that's going to tear things up. It is tearing things up. You know. It's not safe to have people driving across there. But that's our concern is the safety. That's what the insurance guy did mention that, you know, it might be less of a problem keeping people from driving out over there than having the, the actual cable and, and pipe there. Mm -hmm. uh, keep somebody from you know, maybe shooting out there, people drive down the street, that's kind of maybe something they aren't going to expect to have happen there, you know, if they're familiar with what, what's, what's supposed to happen. <laughs> and, uh, so. in motion. I'll move to approve the cable and pipe fencing for the school district. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries 4 0. We need a, a permit for that. We like can't we issue a permit for that. Okay. So it's just not a permittable deal. So okay. this, this is, <laughs> just this is what's uh, sure. going to allow you to do okay. that. Of course, you uh, need call and locates and everything for us. Yeah, we already did that. So okay. We jumped the gun. <laughs> okay, so well, you'll need to update it since that morning. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Presentation from Nicely Brothers. I believe you all should have gotten information in your packets. Well, I'm sorry to report I'm not Steve. Steve had uh, other obligations to meet um, <clears throat> this evening. A um, couple things. One, I realized after the fact that I failed to. Sure. I realized I failed to include in the packet, like I said I did, this uh, brochure. This is a draft of, of a, um, a single stream recycling brochure. So my apologies and the rest of you guys know have a couple of you can do that. Um, I'm here tonight to, to kind of listen and hear what you guys uh, are looking for. Um, I want to know if recycling is important to you, if uh, Trash carts are important to you. If you like the single stream concept, uh, I just kind of want to hear. Now I could stand here and I could tell you all the neat things about the, uh, the, the shiny carts and and um, uh, new trash containers for commercial customers. If I could uh, talk about free city, the service to city buildings and parks and all this kind of stuff, but I'd like to tell you about our people. Um, First of all, I'm going to tell you about my dad. Dad started the business in 1956. 
uh, and he hauled trash for 45 years. I also want to tell you about uh, John. John was with our company for 42 years and retired uh, the week before Thanksgiving. I want to tell you about Titus. Titus has been with us for over 30 years and um, at a council meeting I was at a few years ago in the city of Turon, um, a little tongue-in-cheek, but one of the council members said, well, let's go ahead and have nicely continue with the service here on one condition, that Titus stays our route man. Um, and then I want to tell you about Jonathan. Jonathan is, has been with us over 10 years. He drives a, um, an automated uh, um, trash and recycling collection truck. Um, the, the truck that you see going down the street that reaches out with the mechanical arm and sets it down. He does that all week long. He's been with us for 10 years. I guess what I'm saying is that anybody can have the same trash carts, the same trash collection trucks that we use. But it's our people that make us different. We, we take pride in, in the work that we do. We do a great job for folks, and folks love us because of, of the, the job that we do. So with that said, I'm going to back off and say, what is it you'd like to see? I'd like to remain in the alley the way it is, for one. I, I see other towns with those cans that sometimes they get put away and sometimes they stay okay. on the curb. But I guess we're just spoiled to not have a trashy street. That's the only one. It's the only thing I like. Okay. And I'm up for change, but. I don't want to. You notice that the word I used in the proposal that I proposed is that what were they about? We always encourage using streets for residential collection. I would I would say if that's a big issue to the city, um, that's certainly not impossible to do. We like streets better because they're generally maintained better. Um, if snow removal is an issue on those couple weeks out of the year that we might have snow, um, the streets generally get cleaned more quickly than, than alleys do. That's, I visited with some <coughs> people and staff and they were they were hoping to continue using alley as okay. well. But. With the with the automated trucks, it is a little bit more of a challenge to for alley collection because sometimes it kind of scrunched together and um, it's um, but it's certainly not impossible. So we could we can do that if you prefer an, an alley. I would say this that if if you decide that you're going to stay alleys, that you probably don't want to switch some sections to streets and some sections to alleys, that you pretty much... Well, uh, there's some that don't have alleys. Okay. That would be the only Well, I would say that let's not make a lot of changes. There. Right. Yeah, they, would, they currently take it to the street now. They would continue to Sure. Because it would be trespassing to get it to. But would you, uh, if you did alley, are you going to make everybody put it on one side of the alley? No. Or you got to two-trip that no. alley? What way? Go the other way. We have to do both ways. Okay. Well, I I would say I've never seen it done that way. Where you uh, sure it'd be nice for the for the driver, uh, you know, mm -hmm. kill two birds with one stone, up one alley and, and do both sides. It's not typical that that would be the case. I mean, it's not typical that both sides would be on one side. Mm -hmm. okay. And you can't dump off of both sides of the alley? At the same, at the same time. time? That's correct. Is there any issues with 
I, when these containers are picked up and are dumped in with wind or anything catching trash, do you guys ever see much of that? You know, as far as if there's a lot of paper and we have a lot of wind, as you know, and you go to dump it and you know down the alley it goes. Um, that that is an issue sometimes in um, with the trash. People generally bag it, yeah. and so it's not so much an issue there. Sometimes with the recyclables where they're not bagged, that can be an issue. But, um, you know, we do a pretty good job of keeping that from happening because there's uh, like a big screen around the hopper area itself that, that helps with that. But no, that, we're in Kansas. Um, some trash gets away. That's... Uh, that's true whether you're running a rear load or whether you're running a front load or, or an automated side loader. Um, we've not seen that it's a lot worse with, with automation. How tall is that, <coughs> that uh, container when you start to dump? Is there, do you have any trouble with height wise? You mean the residential cart? Yeah. Or even a commercial cart, because we've probably got some commercial carts that's in some alleys. What is the what is the typical height? On a commercial container, the typical loading height is 48 inches, except for the two yard. That's the little one, and it is 36 inches. No, and I think you misunderstood. Me. When you're dumping it, oh. that cart comes up. How how what's the height? I mean, we got power lines that run sure. right along inside them alley. That could be an issue. I would I would want to look at that and see if that's a that's a. You don't have any idea how high it is. Well, I could guess. I would guess it's twelve feet, maybe something like that. It it really wouldn't be you much. You got a forty-eight inch container. Oh, you are you talking about a commercial con container? Mm -hmm. The commercial containers are much higher than that. Um, I would guess that. A, Eight yard might be close to 20, but we we deal with low wires all the time. Our guys are really good. Um, we can pick it up, we can move it into the alley or someplace that that it's clear. <laughs> Sometimes that's a, that's a, a trick. Um, we try to set it in, in a location where it doesn't have to be moved. You know, either you pick it up in the opposite direction or something. Um, but it's not it's not terribly uncommon for a commercial driver to have to back out into an alley to dump the container and then put it back into place. So, um, but the, yeah, the, I, I did misunderstand your question. Front load container is very very tall when it's when it's up in the air, eight yeah. yard. Might not be quite twenty feet. Because we've got lines that run across the alley just every mm -hmm. time we turn around, don't we? Have? Mm -hmm. If we were to uh, go with your service, um, there'd be specified days. Now, would there be different days for picking up recycling or and trash, or would they all be picked up at the same day, or how would that work? That's a good question. Um, trash is generally picked up every week. Recycling every other week. And in some locations, it's the same day. In many locations, it's the same day. And maybe it's 50-50. It's not the same day. Okay. Um, we work really hard to make so that in a municipality like this, that, that they are picked up the same day. So while one may be picked up at 7 o'clock and one may be picked up at 4 o'clock, uh, the resident doesn't have to take trash one day and recycle. Yeah, that, that's, that would be my point right there. So you can get some um, residents here in town that may not want to do it twice, uh -huh. you know, sure. two different days yeah. and so forth. So, I mean, it would be something that we'd really have to think about right there. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but you get somebody that starts missing, they bring, bring your trash out on the wrong day, mm -hmm. and it doesn't get picked up, and then we get complaints. Sure. So. Um, I would say that we would work really hard to, to make so that, in fact, if you want that language in, we can, I'd be happy to put that language in the, the agreement. 
uh, that it that it is recyclable. So, um, the request is certainly not unusual. Okay. And I think it was asked that the last time that uh, we spoke with uh, with you gentlemen, um, everyone in the city would be supplied with two cans. Yes. Okay. Well, let me back up. The recycling is typically optional. Okay. And you can either do an opt-in or an opt-out. Um, I would suggest that you do an opt-out because we typically have a higher percentage of people who want to recycle than who don't. And so it's less of a hassle to say, if you don't want it, you got to come in and sign up or call the clerk or you know whatever. I guess a question that I would have for you is um, the city bills each individual customer and I assume you don't have any reason to change that. Um, what about uh, commercial customers? Do you bill commercial customers? Do you want to keep doing that? Um, because in some municipalities we bill uh, commercial customers directly and the residential customers get billed um, through the city. So I just wanted to bring that out to... Are you going to help me save some money? We we'll always help folks save money. Okay. This, uh, I, I will tell you this, that this is going to be a shock to businesses because of the way that the, the county has uh, changed uh, the way that they're not going to pay for tipping fees anymore. And so um, it's likely that you're going to get a shock when you see what it's going to cost for uh, the tipping fee because uh, the county is going to pay more for it. Another question. Um, over at the over at the school here, we have Mr. Mark. We have a large. We have the large bins in the back over mm -hmm. by Mr. Miller's uh, um, shop class over there. Mm -hmm. um, how many of those do we have? Two. Two of them. Can your company accommodate those bins? Those large bins. We can, but typically. Uh, and what I'd be proposing is to go with the larger uh, front load commercial containers sure. that look kind of like here on page eight. Sure. Um, if I remember right, you have at least three or four in different locations around the school. And most of our trash is in, you know, thirty gallon cans. Okay. And bagged up. And isn't an ideal situation. Okay. Well, we would probably suggest that you go with many of the containers that I've seen around town are two cubic yards and three cubic yards. Um, with, the, with the equipment that we use, uh, you can use up to, to an eight cubic yard. And uh, um, the, you gain a lot of efficiency in the bigger sizes with, with the bigger uh, containers. And, commercial containers, so um, we probably would set a couple of eights there maybe or mm -hmm. something like that, depending on what, how frequently it's dumped. And, right. um, and we would um, have our sales guy, Steve that was here the last time, he would stop by at each business and, and look and see what do you have, how frequently is it dumped. Uh, what's the best deal for you as to frequency and, and uh, uh, size and so on. So. This here being an eight yard here? So That's correct, sir. Eight, six. This being a two yard? Or one yard? Yes, that is a two. The twos, the smallest ones, are actually a uh, plastic container. All the other commercial, uh, most of the other commercial computers are metal. 
And if you set a commercial container, you're going to dump it once a week, correct? We can dump it once a week. We can dump it every other once a month. Um, it is possible that we would uh, we would have uh, two times a month, uh, two times a week service in the in the city. Where and there's a lot of unknowns right now. what we do is we, we sit down, like I said, with commercial customers and say, what's the best deal for you? Do you want a four-yard picked up every other week? Do you want a two-yard every week? Do you need an eight-yard? Do you need two eight-yards? What do you need for recycling? Um, you know, there's just a bunch of options. And, and um, we found it the easiest to have Steve physically stop by at each commercial business and say, what do you have, what can we do for you, so on, so it works out pretty well. But any of the containers that we have now, that we own, will be no longer any good if we change for That's correct. We, it's, it's not unusual, like in the City of Medicine Lodge, a lot of, uh, and we just did a switch over there last April, um, a lot of the containers were, there was a few exceptions. The city owned a few, but for the most part, customers owned their own containers. And we had a, uh, a buyback uh, program where we bought the containers back if customers wanted to sell them. Some of them said, no, nah, I'm going to use it out the farm. Some of them said, uh, come get it. Uh, so we just paid like a rebate on uh, removing the container. The, the containers that we provide, we don't ever, well, almost without exception, we own all the containers. And so if it gets um, rusty, if the lid uh, falls off, all you have to do, well, the driver is supposed to, supposed to let us know and we're supposed to fix it before you ever notice it. But um, if something isn't right, you call us and we fix it. Or is it? So, are these containers, any of these mobile containers, have they got wheels on them? The twos uh, go either way. The threes and fours, we sometimes put them on, on wheels, but we use plastic ones if we put them on wheels, usually. They are fairly heavy, so it's not something that you want to push around much. An eight yard, for reference, Weighs almost a thousand pounds. Almost a thousand pounds of steel there. <clears throat> what do you want to see? Well, I think ultimately we're looking at trying to get a big proposal pulled together okay. and putting it out so that it can be done competitively. Okay. Um, hope to have that pulled together no later than the second meeting in January um, because we're running out of time potentially for the first meeting in January if um, we can get it pulled together by then. Okay. So um, definitely, you know, we'll be advertising. We'll make sure you get a copy of the okay. packet when the time comes and go from there. Okay. So. Um. I think other cities in in um, Stafford County are shooting for like a January 9 um, to have bids together, and I would really like it if if we could coordinate this together with with other cities so that we um, so that everybody's bidding on the same thing and there's no. Um, well, and, and the reason I said, you know, I don't come with any numbers today because um, anybody can underbid anybody by a nickel. Yeah. So I would, um, I'm certainly not afraid of competition. Uh, I, I will say that. And that's what makes America strong. But um, I just don't want to lay my numbers out on the table for 
somebody else to. No, it would be, it would be all the bids would be due at the same okay. time. Great. So. Well, I I think they should be open at the table. Yeah. But that. That's fine. Yeah, if he wants that. to carry it in and do it seven o'clock p.m. Okay. Okay. Whatever you decide. But uh, I don't know. Mr. Welch and his family have lived here forever, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they stepped up to the plate when we had to do something the last time, and, mm -hmm. and I hate to see another business leave town, but it's not out of the question. I understand exactly what Kevin's saying. Mm -hmm. I also understand that we need the best trash services we can get. We will make sure you guys get a bit back. Okay. You guys sit in a difficult situation, and uh, I uh, thank you for your community service. Thank you. Thank, thanks for having us here. Sure, thank, thank you. you. Okay. I'll wait to hear from you. I don't have anything. So you I have nothing. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 They're on a rotation every three years. So it's time for this unit to be replaced. Is that who you usually get them from? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. What do you get the old ones? Sometimes we've given our old ones to like the police department if they needed them. Um, Using them here, we need them for nothing that holds a lot of data, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the power plant, you know, gets, well, not the power plant, this one here, for people to use when they come in. I'm not sure what plans would be for, for this one. Is it not working, Vicki, or is it just outdated? Or? No, it's just outdated. I'll move to approve. That's closed. Okay. Is that something John and me do? Uh, no, like Julian said, we're on a rotation schedule. So um, it would be the treasurer's which would be mine. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to push the new old Donald's down. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank have it and be without. <laughs> Is there any additional conversation? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 3-1. work with the numbers day in, day out. Right. But we don't. 
and it would be really helpful to be able to know I what's agree going with that. from. That's what I had written out to the site on my own. So. Yeah. If you could just walk through those real quick as far as what's going from where to where. Sure. Okay, on the first one here, uh, the 20000 is a transfer to the general fund from the sewer. Okay, the second one for 60000 is transferred to the water and light surplus from the water and light. transfer to sewer replacement from the sewer utility. Okay, the next one is the transfer to capital project improvement from the general, and um, that's that swimming pool line item. And the next one is 15000 transfer to storm sewer replacement from the storm sewer utility. Okay, next we have 48,000 transfer to equipment reserve from water and light. Finally, 182000 transferred to the general fund from water and light. Second, is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for a Your any encumbrances? Okay. Again, on the year-end encumbrances, this is something that we do annually, and um, as you can tell in your copy that you received in your packet, it tells uh, in each fund what the encumbrances are for December 31st, 2013. So then what you're doing is you're closing out the encumbrances for this fiscal, for this calendar year fiscal year and then creating a new encumbrance for the 2014 year. Okay, what we have here is we have the 2012 encumbrance in the first column and then the total amount that was encumbered last year. Then you have your total amount that was paid out. Then whatever <coughs> was not paid out you have to cancel that. So that shows what the amount is going to be canceled that was not encumbered. Um, then we have our new encumbrances for 2013, and so in the last column here, you just you have your total new encumbrances for the year, and that goes for each fund. Does anybody have any questions? Second, is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries for a um, No, I do not. 
Bill? Uh, on the superintendent's report, we got the, all the water line done. We got about 60. You just have to fill in the holes in the road and put that road back. We got six feet open up in there, except for a six and nine. So uh, we get all that. We ran the, some unexpected things on our last uh, abandonment on the lines. But once we got dug up, it turned out to be a lot different than what we were hoping to find. It took a little longer than we thought to make the switch, but we did, everything's done now. It's two and a half inches of abandonment. And of course, everybody's pretty good on that six inch. So that's done. Uh, next item would be the request of the uh, executive session. I'll let the personnel for five minutes, uh, including myself, council, and the mayor. So, I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. <coughs> let me run my that you that. Uh, the West Street. Uh, you got a copy of the letter. Uh, the only thing I would say that I did talked to the current owner, called him twice. Uh, the initial contact letter we got was, you know, we talked about too, about the the uh, skunks and the cats and the police department put out the traps and all the cops cats and all that. So, I mean, that's, that's part of it. But I did make contact with them and the people, some of the, the, the security items as far as holes in doors and, uh, you know, the garage, doors up on it. I said, you know, you need to get that closed and I haven't gotten any response. So, uh, you know, last meeting you mentioned about sending a letter to them and I, I'm really glad this came because I felt like they touched on something on the second page and I didn't know what, uh, how council wanted to do this. I, the letter I would have sent would have addressed the items I had talked about. The, the holes where the animals can get in, the front door and the garage and all that. But uh, on the uh, third paragraph down, uh, right after the, where they talk about the 60,000, you know, we will not accept, fix a window here and there and allow this house to remain as is. So, I didn't know, you know, they talk about inspecting the inside. We never have, you know, went into people's houses and, and, and looked and see where they're livable. We've got some empty houses around that, you know, no one's lived in and, and yes, People don't utilize them for a house, but and they don't meet the minimum housing code. But we never really addressed that, so I didn't know which direction you wanted us or me to, to take on this. So address the superficial, or you know, if they're saying that's not really not. and I don't know what the asbestos um, I don't know. is. I have no idea. What it is. I can say I haven't got permission to get on the property and it would be anything else. That's what it would take. So. Okay, well my first question is what the ordinances the ordinances that are being referred to here, eight dash five oh seven and eight dash five oh eight, what do those state? Okay, it's a maintenance regard to maintenance and repair on dwellings. And just basically, uh, shall be maintaining good repair. The roof shall not leak. Uh, no dampness in walls and ceilings, all floor stairways, windows, etc. Shall be in good usable condition. And then the uh, next one is designated an unfit dwelling. Uh, uh, unit for, that is unfit for human habitation shall be placarded. Uh, you know, and just a matter of inspection. Okay, well, if, we're, if the city chooses to take action on this issue, then is it also going to take action on the residence that's located at Nutting and Forth on the southwest corner? Well, that's, I mean, I, that's that's the question you have to answer. I mean, Because, I mean, then we start, how many places in town are we going to go in and start deciding that we need to tear down? I mean, we've had complaints on exterior, and people have, you know, made an attempt to make it look like something. And you know, if they don't go inside there, you know, some people say, well, it doesn't matter what the inside. But when I drive by or I look at it, I want to see something that isn't an eyesore. So that's what is how it's been handled in the past. So I'm not saying we don't have other houses that, that fall underneath it. So that's that is a, a good point. Oh, I think there's what do we drive around, Kevin? Six or eight? 
It really needs some attention. Man. Mm -hmm. Maybe more than that, I can't remember. And I, and I don't know for sure, but I've heard that that one you just mentioned changed hands. So it may be for... I just wondered because I've watched it deteriorate mm -hmm. in the uh, seven years that we've been here. I think it's on the list for demolition. I don't know that. The house was one over here on the north side of or the west side of the brick building north of Jeans. Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's. I talked to the owner on that, and the time is up. Mm -hmm. But he still indicated he had some stuff to get out of there. But we've got we've got the right to to go ahead and, and proceed on it. So we'll okay. see. Uh, do matter just doing it. So. Well, I'd like to see them cleaned up myself. Okay. Yeah, agree. What's what you guys? Is, where you at on this? I yes. agree with you. I'd like to see especially after up. the health department came. Exactly. Yeah. When we get something like this, this is take notice of right there, so we need to do something about this. Okay, so what steps do we need to take? Well, there's a procedure in here, we'll have to read up on it to make it with Rob, because we, you know, we don't want to <coughs> start in the wrong direction, you know, and, okay. and not yeah. do it correctly, and then have to backtrack. We've mm -hmm. unfortunately yeah. had that happen before. So we, you definitely need to do this correctly, because I know a few months back um, in uh, Belpre, they had a similar situation, and uh, it was involving several homes, one of them happened to be my aunt, um, and there was just a lot of problems because they did not follow the procedure. We need to make sure that's what we're doing right now, just take care of it so we don't have no problems like they did. If you guys have made or have an idea of where these properties are located, if you could get a list, no, that would be helpful because I think if we're going to do this, it makes sense to address them all. Uh -huh. At one time, Absolutely. then there is no perception of favoritism, favoritism right. or right. whatever. I better check all the windows on the rental house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I better look at mine. The, the question I have for clarification, are we looking exterior or are we going to pursue this to make sure that if it's a house and it looks good, or are we going to push it to where we look inside and if it doesn't have heat and all that stuff? It doesn't mean minimum housing, and that's, oh, it, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what it says here. Right, but I think if a person has a uh, uh, concealed structure that doesn't let anybody in or out, and the doors are locked, the windows yeah, are intact, right. okay. no one can break in, and it looks mm -hmm. relatively livable. Yeah, that the crows aren't living in it or whatnot. Right. You don't have a family of skunks on the floor. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm not going to discriminate on color, on whether, you know, how beautiful it has to be, but this needs to be safe. Did that answer your question? Well, I'm just, once again, referencing this. We will not accept fix a woman here and there. I mean, that's basically what we're saying here. I mean, right. if you go over there and secure the doors and get all the holes fixed up, mm -hmm. that's that's making it safe and okay to look at, but not according to uh, someone else's thought on it. So it, I just want to make sure if we start this, what we're, what the final goal is. Get with Rod, find out what he thinks, what his recommendation is, what we, procedure we need to follow, and then we'll then bring it back to the first meeting in January and we'll go from there. That's what, uh, uh, there's another one right there, uh, on 6th Street, I believe it's an old church. There's a, a basement there. Mm -hmm. Doors half tore off of it. I mean, you can well, maybe you can go down there and live, probably. I don't know. I've never been down there. But you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. I'm going to take this. Excuse me. This is Kevin. I will say that I, with my vacation status, and the council isn't going to grant me any uh, extension or anything, and I know we've been through that. this with the police and everything, with a water line and all this stuff going on and everything to finish up in the year, I, I need to be on mm -hmm. vacation. So I'm just saying if we're expecting this, I, I want, I don't have any problem on doing Second what's meeting before. Second meeting in January will be fine. Huh? Second meeting in January okay, will be right. fine. So, okay. Well, everybody understands that. <laughs> So 
little counter or holler it to Is me. there okay. okay. So is there anything else in the know? I will come in tomorrow and I'll contact with Rod and, and get some of this stuff. I've got a few okay. things I need to finish up and if I lose time so be it like well, there's things I have to get done, so I wasn't aware you were on vacation. Well I'm not. Oh, I should okay. have been three days ago, so I'm already <laughs> to the bad on me and good you, so but that's where it works. So. Okay, is so that vacation is that you don't have to show up? For vacation? Yeah. Well, I'm not supposed to. Oh, okay. I, just thought I had a week scheduled a long time ago and I had to cancel it, so I, it's, you know, we're out of time, so that's the way it goes, I guess. Is there any new business? Okay, under old business, um, additional 5% health insurance. Did we come to a decision on that, on increasing the employee share to the maximum allowed by the Affordable Health Care Act? I don't have the paperwork with the numbers on it. It's a couple percent increase, I think. I think it was 5%, wasn't it? Well, it, you can go up to a maximum of 5%, and they were already paying a certain portion mm -hmm. and it just is being increased so that it, it's up to that 5%. I think that's what we talked about in the read on it. I think so. If I remember correctly. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember, didn't we approve it for six months? That's what I thought, yeah. Okay. So then we'll just need to look at where we're at again in a couple of months here. So. I thought according to the last minutes that you guys were going to make that decision tonight. On what, because there was, and I can pull it up and look, see what they might say to be sure if you'd like me to do that. Again. The only thing under go is Christmas lights prior year. No, on the November 19th meeting. Oh, yeah, those are the seventh meeting. Yeah, can you pull those please so I can get them? While we're waiting, here's something just to throw up in the air. When I was on vacation the rest of the year, what happens if we get a bad storm here next week? You guys can't bend a little bit on an emergency. No, I'm just. I mean, I'm I'm always uh, available. Like I, I, I say, I, I come in. in someone in I thought maybe he, he, he was leaving town. No, I'm not no. leaving town. I mean, I, I I might for a day or whatever. I mean, I'll have to you know make sure we're covered everywhere else. But I'm just saying, I don't have any to, to be. It might be a day or two, but I really don't. But I'm just saying that. Talking about that, do we have any applications for? No, no current on the on the electric. So, yeah. what about otherwise? Uh, I do have one for the water department that's wanting a part time position. So, if you want to discuss it when you're in the executive session for a couple minutes, five minutes. You know, I like. You need full time, don't you? Uh, you need full time. Yeah, but I'm just saying it would help out. But it, like I say, we're covered already. If, if I need help, I can. I can. Uh, but you, if you were going to leave for a week, even a family deal, you would leave the highest man in charge. To yeah, work I mean, with we got John department heads. The mayor to right. call someone to get in. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, we got department right. heads, and, and whenever I've gone in the past, I've had it all lined up. So it's, there's, you know, they've right. always called. There's not really been. We're saying is when I was in Branson and we had a tornado come through. Yeah, <laughs> man. yeah, Jonah and, and Jill and yeah. maybe everybody Dickie dove in and on Sunday morning making calls. Yeah, so I mean it, it you know, and they called me and so it, it, yeah, everybody did a great job on it. So you about to determine if I leave something's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. not good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The motion that was made that night was that we approve the health insurance plan for six months 
with the employee deduction to be to be determined at tonight's meeting. So we need to make a motion on and approve if we're going to leave the employee share as it is currently or if we're going to raise it to the maximum allowed, which is 5%. And I don't have numbers in front of me to be able to, to tell you what the difference is right now. I'd make a motion to bring it up to 5%, the maximum, on the employee share. And that's, and that's going to come right out of their pocket. Right. Starting in six months? No, starting January 1. Yeah. Correct, Vicki? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was my only deal is, is not, I mean, I would, I'm not opposed to doing it, Bob, but it's, it would be tough if you're on tight budget and you yeah. take another 5% out of your budget. Oh, i got to start that in two weeks. Or is it, it's the first check in January. You're going to be five percent down. No, you're actually going to be three percent because you're already on two percent or two and a half percent. Oh, okay. They're so, already paying a yeah. portion, and we're just increasing that portion right. to five five percent total. But the thing about we're it is, Kevin, we're not increasing the full five percent. We're increasing it two and a half percent. Two and a half. Okay. But Kevin, there's nobody in the country that pays a full ride for the family. I didn't say that. So I want to raise it. I just say that you should give them some notice. Yeah. Okay. That's the only thing I'm saying. 2.5% two, 2 isn't as bad of a, I mean, I mean, you don't ever walk in your office and say, hey, in two weeks I'm cutting your pay. Yeah, I will. I'm going a bit. Well, I know you would, but you don't. <laughs> if this thing goes south, that's exactly what will happen. They'll yeah. go to unemployment. Right. I have a motion on the table to increase the employee share to the 5%. So I have a second. Okay, motion dies for lack of a second. What are we going to do here, folks? We have to make a decision. I mean, if nothing else, we have to make a motion to leave the amounts as they stand currently with the city to absorb the additional cost. We do that for now, and then in six months we're going to have to find out exactly what we're going to do. So, I agree. I, yeah. I mean, I, I would say that we need to give them written notice on that six months, because of the ones that aren't here, to tell them there's going to be some change. So, the motion is that the employee share will remain the same. A letter will be given to all employees. Do you still have another check this month? Yes, we do. In the last check, in December, notifying them as to the potential increase in six months of their share of the premium. And the council makes the commitment to have it ironed out by that time so that we can tell them exactly what it is. I think is. that's the fair thing to do. Yeah. So, I have a motion from Sherry. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 3 1. Motion to adjourn. Second.